Ugh. Step one done. Drink 60 cans of Diet Coke or your favorite beverage. Ugh. Hi everybody, thanks for stopping by. With the 2017 solar eclipse coming up on August 21st, I thought I'd better build a solar eclipse viewer. So here's what I'm working on. Here's the prototype version. There's lots of different materials you can use to build these mailing tubes or cereal boxes or anything really, you know, a long box or tube. Uh, the longer the box, the bigger the image will be. So I decided to make it out of one Diet Coke box for the prototype. And it's a pinhole viewer. So on this side, there's one little mark right there. If you can see that, that's the pinhole. I just made that with a thumbtack. And the light from the sun will go through that and it'll actually project an image down at the other end of the box here where you can actually see the sun. And so this one, you know, was just a box we had that we tore open. And it actually works pretty good because you can kind of stick your whole face right on this here and look down in there. Um, the one thing you want to not do ever is look directly at the sun, of course, or look through the sun through the pinhole. You don't want to do that either. You only want to ever look at it with the sun at your back, uh, looking at this side of the box. So never directly at the sun, just always indirectly when you're using a viewer. But anyways, this one works great, but if we could make this actually longer, it'll actually make the image of the sun at this end bigger. So what I did was I drank 70 cans of Diet Coke. No, you don't have to drink all 70. Just open up the boxes if you're gonna use Coke boxes or whatever pop you want. And so we're gonna make it out of five of these to try to make it longer and to make the image of the sun bigger. So let's get working on it. All right, everybody, let's build this thing. So sit back, relax, and I'll tell you what I'm doing here. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is gather your materials. You're gonna need five Coke boxes, duct tape, tin foil, scissors, and a thumbtack. First thing you can do here is look for the smallest pair of scissors you have. <laughs> I could barely put my hand in there, but I made it work. <laughs> so on three of the boxes, you're gonna wanna cut off the tabs on either side of the box. It's gonna make up your center section. And on the first box, you're gonna wanna leave the end on there and cut out a hole in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's where your pinhole is gonna go. So to make the pinhole, just get the tin foil, cut a square out about the size of the end, and then poke a hole in the middle with your thumbtack. I'll describe later on what sizes you need to make. I think something happened to that one, so I just went ahead and made another one. Oh, kitty! <laughs> She's checking things out, making sure I'm doing it correctly. And then once you got the pinhole in the center there, just take some duct tape and tape it down. So that's box number one of the viewer there. All right, getting ready for box two. You can see that's one that you cut off the tabs on both sides, box two. And just take some duct tape and wrap it around. I was really surprised with one wrap of duct tape, it was surprisingly sturdy, which is great because you're gonna be taking that outside and using it. The other thing with duct tape that I didn't do while I was taping this was go ahead and tape up all the perforations that are on the box that are meant to like tear it open to get the cans out. Just seal up all the light leaks we can. So I think this is box three, I think. The other thing I want to mention here while I'm taping up some boxes is that there was two cool websites I found. Uh, the University of Illinois has a cool website on how to build these kind of pinhole viewers. I'll put their link below. That's where I got uh, a lot of ideas on how to do this. And NASA has a cool resource page for the Eclipse too. I'll put their link down there below too. A lot of cool stuff to check out. So now I lost track. I'm thinking we're at about box four, maybe. 
So the last thing I'm going to do here, I think that's box five, is we're going to be sliding it over to cut out that window. I pulled out the prototype to match up the hole there. On the prototype, that just happened to be where the hole was and it worked perfectly, so I tried to duplicate that. So I just let you sit here and watch me cut out that view hole. I think I'll move the camera for you. Oh, there's the full size of it. <laughs> hey, here we go. I'll cut out the view hole for you. And that's about it for this build. So I'll see you at the bench for a couple extra things I did, but we'll see you there. Yes, the Mega 5 Coat Box Sun Viewer has been completed and works perfectly. So just feast your eyes on this glorious piece of optical equipment and uh, I'll tell you about it here in one second when I can stand by the camera again here. <laughs> the thing is absolutely huge. Of course, it's five Coke boxes long. So let me tell you about the differences um, that I had to do. There's a couple things I did after the video I took of it. So I'll just tell you about those two different things that I did and we'll go outside and take a look at these. Well, we'll take a look at the sun with these. <laughs> All right. So the main thing I had to do differently was to do with the size of the pinhole. On the small one, I used the very tip of the thumbtack. I just barely poked the tin foil, and it's a minuscule hole. It works perfectly on the small one, but on the big one, I could barely see the sun when I was looking through it. So I got to thinking about it, and since this is kind of like the aperture of a pinhole camera, like our lens right here, this tin foil. I thought, well, maybe the problem is since this is a tiny hole and it's dim down there, I just need more light. So I'll open up the aperture a little bit. So to do that, I just use the whole thumb, the thickness of the thumbtack. So I push the thumbtack all the way through uh, the tin foil on the bigger one. So I have a bigger hole. Maybe I can show you that outside, but it's kind of hard in here. So on the larger one, I have a bigger hole. And when I tried that, the larger hole, it works perfectly. It's easier to focus, well, not really focusing, but easier to find, to find the sun. The difference between the two really is the smaller one, you, you can find the sun really quickly with it. The bigger one's a little bit harder, but nothing, you know, that's impossible. <laughs> and it gives you a bigger uh, view. So on the smaller one, it gives you a smaller sun ball. And on the bigger one here, you get a bigger sun, you know, ball. <laughs> So the only other thing I did was at the viewing end of these, maybe we can see it in here. You can, uh, well, maybe not. But I put some black card stock down in the bottom. So just black paper. I thought that might help us view the sun contrast a little better. And it seems to work nice. So I'm gonna keep it that way on both of them. So let's head outside. Or maybe I can show you the pinhole differences. I don't know. And uh, we'll look at the sun through the viewer. Not directly. <laughs> let's get out there. Caught me looking through my awesome sun viewer here. Come on over, I'll show you the pinholes, how to focus them, and give you a peek inside. Okay, so here we are outside and we're gonna take a look at the lenses, or the pinholes. So on the top we have the smaller one, smaller version, and boy, I don't even know if I can find it for you. I think it's right there, yeah. Right there above my finger, just that little tiny hole. And if we go down here to the bottom one, this is the bigger version. And look at the difference. You can really find that hole real easy this time. So that's the difference of the thumbtack just barely going through. On this one, just enough to make a puncture. And this one, like putting the thumbtack all the way through as if you were pinning something to the poster board. All right, so now let's get up and I'll show you how to focus one. Okay, now we're standing up and I'll show you the easiest way to focus this. You can see my shadow and I have the smaller version of the pinhole viewer in my left hand here. So the easiest way to do this is just line it up with the sun so that you see only the square. Just you don't want to see any of the length of it, you just want to get it as straight on as possible. And then you can look in there 
and uh, hopefully you see the sun. Let's see if I can do it here real quick. But it's harder, I think, with the camera. Oh, yeah, there it is. I see it. <laughs> uh, can you see it? Uh, yeah, there it is. So we focused it. So you can see how I'm holding it in the sun there. All you can see is the square. And if I stick you in, there's the sun. Pretty cool, huh? So yeah, so you want it that kind of way, just a small square side, not the long ways. So the sun is looking straight into it, and that's how you do it. So now, uh, let's look in the big one. Okay, now we're in the big viewer, and you can see that the sun ball is a little bit bigger, easier to see, and if you look real closely here, you'll actually see a cloud wisp going through. Right there, do you see it starting to go through? Super cool. <laughs> well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed watching me build this crazy solar viewer as much as I did building it. They're not that difficult to build, so why don't you give it a try? Especially these small ones. You probably have everything at home you need. Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, feel free to give it a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe. And hey, if you do decide to build one, let me know about it in the comments. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.